Okay. Uh, can we start? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Let me share the screen and make sure my screen screen works properly. Uh, we can see your desktop now. Desktop. Okay. Uh, PowerPoint. Yeah. PowerPoint. Let me just start the slideshow. Make sure the slideshow is proper. It is. Okay. Asman yeah. Guru Maha. Asman Paramang Guru Bhyo Maha. Asman Sarva Guru Bhyo Maha. Shri Krishna Prabhupada Maha. Shri Lakshmi Hayavada Prabhupada Maha. Shri Lakshmi Nrsimha Prabhupada Maha. Sarvam Shri Krishna Pranamastu. So we are going to uh, do the lecture 46 today. I just want to show you what. I think probably I showed you also on the telegram. Just want you to look at everybody, okay? Look at the next set of people, each one of them. Another set of people, every one of them. I'll give you a few seconds. So we said, what were your emotions, right? It's natural, it's human, human to have some discrimination based on looks, color, young, old, and things like that. This is some, as we grow older, maybe we, uh, we lose this discrimination, we get better. As, as we become mature, we may be different, but this is natural. Why is it? It's almost animal instinct. That's exactly how you look at a tiger and say, oh, uh, everything is Bhagavad Atmaka. Tiger is Bhagavad Atmaka. I am Bhagavad Atmaka. That doesn't really come to us, right? We look at Sharira. You look at an, a, a body of a person and say, we have some emotions towards them, right? We took a, a quiz last time uh, based on this, and I looked at the results. The results do not matter. Let me explain to you why. These results change according to your moods. Sometimes if you look at these pictures in a bad mood, something else, you may have a different um, uh, expression. Some other time in a very sattvic mood, you may have a different view about them. So this, the, the answers don't mean anything. So I just gave you, just to understand, oh yeah, we have some distribution. We have 35% here uh, who would say, I would help any one of them. 30% is none of the above. Then what, what kind of emotions do they have? We don't know. Uh, some people trust some, uh, somebody, some people don't trust somebody. So all these things we are processing based on just looking at body, color, age, uh, national, nationality, and different things like that. So this is natural. Where are we now? What we are saying is we are at different levels. We are not at same levels. We are all at, all at different levels. That doesn't mean that I'm in, in a high level or anything like that. I am at, at the bottom most level, I guess. We have Sharira Atma Brahma. Sharira Atma Brahma means we think Atman is same as Sharira. We mistake the body to represent something about the self. We don't know the self properly. We're trying to assess where we are, right? That's exactly why we feel I am fat, I am thin, I'm bad looking, I'm good looking, I'm uh, dark, I'm fair. We ascribe body attributes, attributes to our atma, our self. This is natural. We, don't, we can't deny this, right? Because the truth comes out when we want to look for a, um, a son-in-law or a daughter-in-law. Look at the matri matrimony ad advertisements, right? Matrimonial advertisements. You see, all sorts of uh, things, all sorts of description of this is the kind of person I want, this is the kind of person I want, and things like that. We are not looking at Atman level at all, at an, at an ordinary level. We need to understand where we are, clearly. Did we see Atma forms regarding those people we saw earlier? We didn't. Lord Krishna says, we are born at the very time of birth. Sargeyanti. 
at the time of birth, we are all given this natural feeling of liking, dislike, like, dislike. Dvandva mohena, Bharata, Sarvabhutani sammoham, Sargeyanti parantapa. Every being which is born, every one of us who are born, are given this feeling of like, dislike towards different objects. So even as infant babies, they like sweet things, they hate sour. Um, some, uh, what do you call, some uh, dark or some kind of, uh, you know, uh, what do you call, fear, uh, some forms make them very afraid and they, they cry maybe. So some, they like some forms. So we know that hatred and liking comes natural to human beings. This concept may change eventually, right? Eventually we mature and say that, okay, this, this is not important. As we get older, more mature, we know that we, we try to control, let's put it this way. We try to control our instincts. Our instincts are still different. I can say even people in Swarupam, you know, many people call people in Swarupam means they should be wearing panchakachai, having uh, a pananitirman, and, and women wearing marishal, and whatever is considered as a socially correct attire. So when people say Swarupam, or in Swarupam, they can And the Swarupam, even people from that kind of family, those kind of Pandit families, when it comes to matrimonial alliances, they look for this kind of person, that kind of person based on color, based on, based on um, other physical attributes. So where is, why am I saying this? I'm not trying to, uh, to belittle anybody here. I'm not trying to belittle any person here. We are only saying, we're trying to understand where we are. Are we at Shariratma Brahma level? or have we gone beyond our Sharidatma Brahma? This is important because the subject matter today will deal with it. Now, let's go to the um, quiz. The quiz was, is Vaishnavism and Atma Dharma or not? The second part of the quiz, uh, what is the difference between Buddhi and Atma? I'm going to, uh, uh, to give that information in the next class. Only quiz one, we will look at it now. Is Vaishnavism an Atma Dharma? Vaishnava Mata an Atma Dharma? Um, I am taking, as I, as I explained earlier, Vaishnavism or Shaivism or Christianity or anything like that, they are generically religion. We can take it as just religion. And uh, see the clear understanding here. It's a Sanskrit term, right? If it's a Sanskrit term, Answer is very clear, clear here. Vaishnavism is not Atma Dharma. Vaishnava Mata is not Atma, At, Atma Dharma. Why is it? The Sanskrit term itself very clearly says Mata is Mati ki Sambandha Patat. Abdina, that, that means it is related to Mati, related to Buddhi. So Vaishnava Mata is related to our intelligence, Buddhi. So, if somebody is a Buddhist, it is because of mentally or um, his, his intelligence says, oh, I, I want to be a Buddhist and I am a Buddhist. So, he is a Shaiva or a Christa or a Christian. So, we have to know what is Atma Dharma and what is Buddha Dharma. And we'll come to the difference a little bit later. This Atma, the Matha can change. Any person, even in his own life, he can change his connection, change, change, affiliation to Christianity or, or Vaishnav, Vaishnavism or Shaivism and things like that. Even great people, even the direct cousin of Ramanujacharya, Govinda, is supposed to have gone uh, somewhere and suddenly he got, uh, got into some influence of Shaiva uh, people and he became a uh, Shiva worshiper for some time and then he came back after uh, some other people taught him uh, this this may be a better idea for you. So in general, what we are, what we are saying is, um, Mata, you should not keep, put them down initially. 
and you know we will come to that later you know in christianity what happens to the um, you know their atma issues and stuff like that how they borrowed the atma views from other systems but still they have some form of atma that's a different question we don't have to go further with it but coming to the main point here is we respect all matas that's important and matha is processing of the brain that means um, uh, adherence to shaivism adherence to vaishnavism everything it's all brain processing it is it doesn't go deep into atma initially and for a long time we process a lot of information which come to our um, brain and um, mind and we say okay this is what is right this is wrong okay then uh, we will make decisions in our life like i'll become a engineer or i'll become a doctor or something like that then you, uh, we may be born into a particular family we will just say assume that okay my mother and father wants to worship uh, mahavishnu so we will worship mahavishnu that becomes a ideology in your mind and, and slowly you because you grow with it you make resolutions or like you, know, you make um, decisions like oh i'm i'm going to the venkateshwara temple today you have practices this is how religion comes to you it's brain work right what is the difference between brain and um, atma dharma we make resolutions say in new year's new year's day resolutions say i'm going to lose weight or i'm going to, i'm not going to be angry this year i am going to not lie this year i am going to speak the truth only this year you can make any any such um, resolution but eventually what happens the first time you have you know find a reason you will break, break your resolution think about lying simple things oh my god you are 10 minutes late to your meeting uh, and and you know boss will be very upset you suddenly come up with the reason saying oh i got stuck in the traffic look at this traffic report oh my god this highway i95 is totally clogged today because of an accident so you say something and you get away with, uh, get away from that uh, that situation you escape that situation so all these are you make a resolution but the resolution doesn't stand and doesn't go and settle in your in your reality in your conscience so it doesn't go into the atma it goes only into the brain there's a lot of distance between brain and atma there's a lot of difference there's no direct connection yet then we uh, come to the, you know if you look at advanced people who are very strict shri vaishnavas and all those things we ask them a question do you have any fear are you afraid of anything or do you do you get um, some kind of fear sometime in your life the person may say oh some very rarely i i am afraid i am i fear something would happen something would happen and all those things but question comes up if you have given up all your all your responsibilities to to shriman narayana uh, and then say oh, he will take care of you why are you afraid so a, a mental decision has not gone deeply into the idea and it has not become gnana form yet it is still a brain processing or oh i am a vaishnava i have given all my responsibility to to god it's a initial brain processing you may firmly believe in it but at times you are shaken particularly when the weather is rough around you in the sense that economic weather financial weather health issues other things um, fi- uh, financial difficulties all these things can take you away from your and reality there reality as like you know, what you feel uh, uh, the shastra says this maturity is not easy to get there is maturity firm conviction that this is what i am this is what my relation to god is this i am ensouled by by, by parabrahman i constantly realize his presence in me all these things are difficult yeah, uh, the Sh- upanishad says yada this is taitiriya i think 2.7 ಯದಾಹ್ಯೇವೇಶ 
यदा कृश्येनात्मे निलयने भय प्रतिष्ठा विंदते here it is abhayam pratishtam vindate but when we say it is bhayam pratishtam it will become anilayane bhayam pratishtam vindate what does it mean when a mature meditator is completely takes focuses on this unknown unthinkable powerful great parabrahman he or she loses all fear he gets they get abhaya that means absence of fear first thing they get is absence of fear yada ke vaisha etasmin udaram antaram kurute atha tasya bhayam bhavati if the focus falters if the person loses focus even for a minute even for a second that person goes through a lot he suddenly becomes afraid athatasya bhayam bhavati even if he loses the connect with god even for a second he becomes afraid in fact um, vishnu vishnu purana or some purana says yan muhurtam kshanam vapi vasudevo na chintyate sahanihi tan mahashchidram sabhrantihi tacha vikriya says even if for a second if you lose the lose the memory of vasudeva that is a great disaster that is delusion that is destruction of your mind this is what it says so what we are saying is our connection to brahman is not just by reading textbooks just by reading uh, shastras They, they are not well established they are still loose so vaishnavism vaishnava avata is a ladder ladder to atma realization first is jivatma realization so vaishnavism will help you for jivatma realization initially and then also paramatma realization realization later so vaishnava avata is not an atma atma dharma it is a buddhi dharma and think about concept we talk about so oh, i am a shri vaishnava so what is the what does it mean to be a shri vaishnava or oh, it says uh, we say um, oh sharira shri baba we accept sharira shri baba then what oh we accept upadana karanatva that is the material causality of the lord that is lord is the real material cause of this universe of souls and universe of jivatma and jada vastus are uh, in, uh, you know in insentient beings sentient and insentient beings we say that do we feel that do you feel that i am a part of brahman i am a piece of brahman do you feel that connect so what does the theory mean the theory is only an ideology to you make you can understand the ideology very well uh, even more comprehend it properly that's a different question if he is the antaryami we say god is the antaryami do we feel that antaryami do you think that, oh i can feel the presence of god within me are we saying that are we feeling it every every moment we can say sheshatvam we our whole purpose is to serve the lord this purpose of jivatma or my life is completely to serve the lord not at all. there is no other purpose other than that it's a lofty thought do we feel it every moment of our life maybe after understanding this focusing after learning from a true a nice acharya a very very um uh, apta uh, person who tells us this information we can definitely feel yeah 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 this is what it it is yes i have we have to live for god, uh, to serve god only there is no other seem that doesn't seem there's the, there doesn't seem to be any other purpose in our in our lives so we can sort of mentally come to an idea we can even say adi in dasan do you feel bhagavata sheshatva what does bhagavata sheshatva mean bhagavata sheshatva mean i am a servant of all the bhagavatas of perumal the i am servant of the devotees of the lord do we feel it we we can practice those, that kind of talk but do we feel it so we have not realized atman we have not realized parmatman 
so the Vaishnava Mata gives you a process, a method to go towards that higher level of realization. Knowing something is not realization. Knowing and feeling are two different things. Knowing relates to the brain and mind. Feeling and realization relates to Atman. So, so getting conviction is important. Studies are important. Travana, manana is important, but dhyana realization comes from nididhyasana. The realization means actual anubhava or experience of that entity right here. We should experience. Like how we touch a hot object and say, oh, it's, it's, it's very hot. If you touch a cool object, we say, oh, it's very cool. Like that we constantly have to experience the Parabrahman and Atman within us. And how do we experience? You know that it is Satyam, Jnanam, Anantam, Amalam, Sukhaswaropam, and all those things. Anandasvaropam. Anand. So the thing is, this, it's full of bliss. You feel the bliss when you experience and have the connection with, with, with uh, God. So, first, the realization goes through first as Atma Sakshatkara and then Brahma Sakshatkara and then Paramatma Sheshatva, and all these things are experienced later. Hope this is clear. And hope uh, this quiz for a quiz was of some use. Any questions on this quiz? We'll come to the difference of uh, difference between buddhi and uh, um, atma a little bit later. You know, uh, we'll come to the you know, there's a, you know we're, there's a lot of story behind it. How to explain? It it takes a little while, so we'll we'll get there later. And some of the answers are very good. The Atmanam Rathinam Viddhi, Shariram Rathame Vacha, the analogy of the chariot and the charioteer and all, they're all very good examples. Uh, so you know where it is. So with this, any doubts? If there, there are no doubts, we'll go directly to the uh, subject matter. Uh, one question. Um, Please, will it, I, I don't know if you... you. Pardon me? Uh, you can hear me, right? Now I can hear you. Okay. Um, how about the instinct part? So instinct, how is it different from interpretation or any other support of intelligence? Will that also be covered in next class? I think we should, uh, yeah, instinct and intuition, right? The other word used was yes, intuition yes. also. Yeah, why don't, yeah. We, uh, why don't we cover it next class? Instinct is something which, which okay. comes automatically, right? Almost like an immediate um, reaction to any kind of um, input. Um, so, so instinct is knowable, um, right? Intuition is a little harder, but we'll come to that next in the next class with some details. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anything else here? Then we'll go to the class now. We'll just get, uh, we have left the class a while ago, so I'm just trying to get the connect here with the uh, subject matter we were uh, dealing with. We were dealing with how acharyas, that is students, used to go and then meet an acharya, and how do how sincere were they? How were they seeking? And how should an acharya evaluate a student? Uh, this is this is what we were talking about at that time. Tadvidhi pranipatena paripristhena sevaya. We we were talking about that verse, and I want to give you some details about the Upanishadic way of learning. And another thing is, um, whom do you go approach? Tattvadarshi. Tattvadarshi means a person who actually realizes, he experiences God, experiences Parabrahman. Person like Yagnya Valkya. He is a rare personality. He, does, he is not just a textbook um, a knowledgeable person. In fact, in the Sanat Kumara Narada Samvada, uh, Sanat Kumara is approached by Narada, and Sanat Kumara asks uh, Narada, uh, how much do you know? He says, I know all the Vedas, all the Puranas, all the Upanishads, the 64 Vidyas, and everything like that. Then, um, uh, then why are you come, uh, why, what do you want from me? Why, why, why are you here? Narada says, Mantra Videvaham na Atma I know all those sort of by knowledge, that is mentally, my inter, my intelligence can understand all those details, but I do not have experience. I don't have the experience of God, experience of Atman. So I want realization. 
na atma vit mantra videva i just know the mantras so this is a very important distinction so uh, whom do you approach a person who is atma gyani for that person to really get what you want that is knowledge you probably serve fall at his feet because he is not interested in your money that person is not interested in anything you can offer to him so he has to make sure that that guru has to make sure that you are really after atma gyana and not from same khyati labha puja some fame or some other uh, uh, to to just you know become another teacher somewhere and teach somebody oh i Uh, you know i want to become a professor of uh, atma gyana or some philosophy or something so i want to learn with somebody it's not like that if somebody is truly interested in atma gyana they have to fall at the feet of this acharyas and the upanishad says the acharya has to test the student tasmay vidwan pratipannaya samyak prashanta chittaya that means you have to see whether the student is calm in the mind whether he has he has self control mind control sense control ena aksharam purusham veda satyam provachatam tatvato brahma vigyam the upanishad says that means only to a person with those characteristics atma gunas the teacher should should uh, give knowledge so nice to look at it this way but you got to think about reality today where are we today who really wants to really know atma gyana and who is in search of such a great atma gyani to understand atma gyana or to realize atma gyana it's a very very rare, rare person in fact if if somebody even you know we 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 hear that um, uh, nobody even wants to get married to a person who has a kudumi so who is a chatushastra pandita or a ganapati or an alaram expert people say oh my god i would rather uh, marry some person who is a ivy league school uh, princeton uh, uh, stanford uh, um, yeah, mit graduate who is uh, set up a big business and huge you know very powerful investment banker or somebody like that people even from the best of the families are looking for monetary stability and then fun in life let's put it this way mula so we have to understand very really where do we our nature may change over years but we and we have to understand how are we in related to bhagavad gita we are studying bhagavad gita or are we just studying the text or where are we we want some kind of realization so we have to realize we are not true brahma gyanis or brahmins or even we, are, we don't really search for brahman properly another um, information here na vats na samvatsara vasine prabhruyat na vinayadi rahitasya na cha vak cha vaktavyam if a person is not modest if that person should not be taught if a person has not lived with the teacher for one year that person should not be taught because it it takes almost a year to to evaluate a person whether the person is sincerely interested in this or just time pass or just curiosity things like that now we go to the next shloka is this is not the next shloka sorry This is a shloka from Bhagavad Gita, known as uh, that is thirteen chapter. Ana amanitva madam bittva mahimsa khyanti arjava maacharya upasanam shocham stayya matma vidinkraha. Here, what we say is, uh, here this this verse basically says, what are the good atma gunas that is explained in the thirteen chapter? I, I just mentioned here so that uh, because a student should have this gunas to really get the appreciation. and get the um connect with a real guru modesty absence of um, you know damba means ostentation ahimsa non injury shanti he means patience even if there are ups and downs a person should know how to deal with that sincerity of purpose service to the preceptor service to acharya 
purity of mind and body, sthairiyam, firmness, that means you don't, um, you know, don't, you don't get, lose hope and give up and, uh, and go away. If, if you don't have the firmness, acharyas would not like such, such students because, oh, this person will not take the long-term um, path. The person will give up. So one should not give up. One should have control, self-restraint in terms of anger, in many in the uh, self-restraint of uh, mind and in, in indriya, so it is sense control. So the next shloka is atma yathatmya vishesya jnanasya sakshatkara rupasya lakshana maha. This is the thirty-fifth shloka, I think. What is the nature of atma sakshatkara? What is the nature of realization of self? This is explained in this, in this uh, verse. Yat jnatva na punar moham evam yasyasi pandava yena bhutani asheshena drakshasi atman atho, atmani atho mayi. Yat jnatva means knowing what knowledge. And the, uh, here jnatva means achieving what knowledge. This knowledge here is not pure book knowledge. Yatnyatva, na punar moham, again you will not fall back into moha. What is moha? Moha is confusion, delusion. Evam yasyasi pandava, you will not be deluded. Yena bhutani asheshena, knowing that knowledge, you see every being is of the form of jnana, jnanakara. That means the form of every, every being is jnanakara. That means you don't see the body itself. You see that, oh, the every living being is of the form of jnana. The jivatma is of the form of knowledge. Drakshasi, you see, you realize. Drakshasi means you see actual realization. Atmani athomai. That means you see your own self as jnanakara or the form of jnana and you see every being around you of the form of jnana and also see that it is similar to Lord Krishna, Atho Mai, that is Lord Parabrahman. You see Paramatma and say, oh, everything is similar. At a particular level, Paramatma is also similar to Jivatma. We, we will come to some details here. Here, Atho Mai means after one gets self-realization, that is, it's not realization yet here, it's, an, it's, it's some level of realization, obviously, here. You know that you are of the form of jnana and all the beings are of the form of jnana. And then you see that similarity with God. Here, the God means Paramatma. So after... Knowing this jnana, what is, the, what is the nature here? What is the mark? The mark is the person will not again get confused or fall into this delusion. That means his karmas would be burnt away. His, most, of, uh, most of his sins are burnt away. And his um, sharir atma brahma will go away. That means he thinks that the body itself is him. He loses the concept of, oh, this body is not me. It is only I is this consciousness. That is very clearly experienced by that. So the, uh, what you see as Deva, Manusha, Akarena. So you see people from, you know, he's from Australia, he's from Africa. Uh, this, is, this, is a, this is a tiger. This is one. All these things are forms, which are body forms. Sarvani Bhutani, all these all these living beings are similar to your own self. And they are endowed with knowledge, jnana. They are individual selves, jivatmas, in different bodies. And due to some karmas, they have this kind of different bodies. This realization comes. Realization is actual experience. You got to understand where we are here. Every person has some kind of a dehatma brahma. 
oh, one person can make a, oh, just because somebody finished off Shri Bhashyam, Bhagavad Gita and everything, all the Upanishads, because, oh, now I, my Dehatma Brahma is gone. You cannot say that. A simple test will find, uh, give you that answer. Even for a jnani, if you throw kerosene at him on his body and then light up a match, he will run away, saying that he knows that he's going to get burnt. Oh, no, no, I'm not burning you. I'm only burning your body. You are different from your body. So what's the big deal? You cannot say that. Because this body self is very connected. So we do have fundamentally something known as Dehatma Brahma, the delusion that body is me. This is very powerful delusion. It is not an easy delusion to get, get rid of. Very rarely an Atma Jnani, it seems that Janaka, uh, many people got jealous of uh, Janaka while Yagnya Valkya was teaching a class of uh, class. And even Janaka was a student in the class. And the rest of the people were very jealous because Yagnya Valkya would respect Janaka and then be very considerate to Janaka. And then he was giving special preference to Janaka. People didn't like it. To, to show what is the level of Janaka, it seems that Yagnya Valkya created a fire out of his yogic power and burnt off the entire Mithila. Basically, it appeared like burning. Everybody felt that whole the Mithila was, the entire city was burned down. Janaka did not move. What is it? Why? Because I own nothing in, in Mithila. Mithila doesn't belong to me. So he, didn't, he, did, he said, I'm just an Atma. I'm, I'm not connected to anything around me. And nothing, I own nothing because that doesn't relate to me. This was his self-realization. So to show Janaka was at this level, Yagni Valkya did this kind of a work of you know, creating a fire or a, a, if everybody felt that there was fire. So Janaka, Janaka had lost the concept of I and mine, aham, ahankara buddhi. Similarly, we know about a great Maharshi called Dadichi. When, uh, when somebody asks him, look, I need to uh, borrow your skeleton, your, your, you know, your skeleton, your spinal, your, your um, uh, what do you call that, backbone. Um, because using that backbone, I want to create a, a weapon. And using that weapon, I can kill Rakshasa called um, Vritra, Vritra Suravadha, right? In the, uh, so uh, Dadichi initially acts like a, oh, I'm just uh, like ordinary person. I value my body more than anything else. Um, how can I give up my body? He, he just uh, gives a small dialogue like that. But really speaking, Dadichi is a great person. Then he laughs at it and says, okay, you can take my body. I'm gone. So he, he sits in a yoga position and then does upasana and leaves the body and goes up and says, do what you want to do with my, with my skeleton. This level of realization, we cannot get. It's very hard. So uh, another thing, uh, a point comes up here is nirdosham hi samam brahma. See, even though we have different types of animals like snake or a small um, fly or, or human beings, the, there is no difference between the jivatma of a fly and a jivatma of an elephant or a jivatma of, of, of any person because uh, the connection with these kind of bodies comes from karma. When the, all the karmas are burnt off, nirdosham hi samam brahma, Bhagavad Gita says in the next chapter, once all the impurities of karma and uh, is burnt away, the jivatma is pure and they are similar to every other jivatma. So all the jivatmas are similar, which is without any blemish. So the equality between Jivatma is being is nature of Jnana Swarupa. Jnana Swarupa is common. There's the nature of the material, the matter of the Jivatma. That is the very form of Jivatma is Jnana Swarupa, made of knowledge. Here is the first shloka where some realization of Paramatma is mentioned. Drakshasi Atman Atho Mayi. Atho Mayi means Actually, after you realize the, the jnana form in, uh, among all the beings, you realize that 
I am also same as that, that I being Lord Krishna says Paramatma. Eventually in 14th chapter, we, we get some connect to this verse. Idam jnanam upashritya mama sadharmya magataha. That means knowing this knowledge, you will become similar to Lord Paramatma. That is said here. So that's the same concept comes early here in the fourth chapter. Tada vidvan punya pape vidhuya niranjanaha paramam samyam upaiti is another Mundakopanishad verse. That Mundakopanishad verse says that once the name and forms are taken away, when you say name, you say Krishna, somebody Rama, or, or we talk, call different people as, with, with names. Name form, if you take away, the Atman is sim similar in everybody. So the knower of Brahman shakes off the Punya Papa, the virtues and sins. Punya, let's keep it as Punya and Papa. They, he shakes off. Niranjana Paramam Swami Upaiti, he will become similar to Parabrahman. Atha Prakriti Vinin Muktam Sarvam Atmavastu Parasparam Sarvam Sarveshwarenaka Samam. So all the individuals' uh, uh, selves disassociated with matter, that is Sharira, are equal to each other and similar to Sarveshwara. Uh, can I ask a question here? Sure. Uh, What's your name? So, in RT, sorry. Oh, okay. yeah, I, I RT. cannot see that as well. Okay, tell me. Uh, so, here we say that Atma is Jnana Swarupa, right? So, yeah. what exactly is this Jnana Swarupa? It can be like in the example that was given with Chariot, the, the intelligence was the driver. Is that the Jnana that we are talking about, or this Jnana is actually different? It is different. Think about it. Okay. Um, think about it. Um, we, see, uh, Atma is Jnana Swarupa means, think about a simple, a pot is made of mud, right? We can say pot is made yeah. of mud. What is Atma made of? What is our self made of? What is the, what is the matter? I, could, I should not use the word matter. What is the, uh, if somebody says, okay, here is a self. If you open up and cut, cut and do, try to look what is inside or what is it, what do you find? Actually, it is jnana. It is not a jnana. It is not, not a knowledge about an object. A knowledge about an object is different. Oh, I know that th this is a water bottle. This is a knowledge about this water bottle. That is different. But the very uh, essence of who we are, that is jnana swarupa. That is, is, is made of spirit. It's made of jnana. That jnana is dis distinct from anything we see as matter. It is not matter, but it is spirit. Does it make sense? Uh, like now, at least, yeah, I am now clear that it is not related to the matter uh, knowledge that we are talking in the day-to-day -day sense. Yeah. So that much I can understand, but I don't. I still don't know what. Yeah, of course, maybe I have that requires realization of something. I don't know. No, so it yeah, still feels a bit vague no. to me. So yeah. only realization will tell you who you are, okay? In another way of lo looking at it is, um, we are mixed up in this body, mixed up in this matter. And uh, we don't know who we are because even if we think about it, we just know that, oh, I am related to somebody or something like that, or I, am, I can feel myself as uh, I'm aware of this. But we are in a mixed state where we are mixed up in the body and our surroundings. We don't know purely who we are. Uh, only when things settles down, when your mind is clean. Like how, um, you know, there is a small um, analogy here. A, 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 hunt, a, a prince goes for hunting into the woods and he starts hunting for a long time, after several hours, it's almost like midday, and uh, suddenly he says he needs to get some water because he's thirsty. He goes near a lake there and tries to bend down and get some water. Because he's so tired, his, um, his crown falls off. He loses his crown, and the crown 
you know basically drowns into the uh, drowns into the lake so it is under the lake somewhere and he says oh my god uh, the army people why don't you go and get my crown it's it's it's, it's down in, in the bottom of this uh, lake they jump in when they jump in they disturb the uh, serenity of the lake and lots of they they dig up the mud and other things so that it becomes very muddy the water becomes very opaque they can't see where the um, crown is so they keep on trying to search more and more lots of people dive, dive in everything is gone then the prince sees a yogi sitting and meditating near the hill nearby he goes to that yogi and says look i have lost my crown can you help me find it he says that uh, uh why don't you come here and sit down for a few hours then uh, king says no 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 i just have to pick up my crown and go then this person says no 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 you should just come and listen to me he starts explaining you are not the body you are not your mind when you go through ups and downs you are not that uh, this beautiful verse of uh, shankaracharya uh, shivoham shivoham you might have heard you can google and find out it's a wonderful verse this explains it beautifully i am not the mind i am not this i am not this if you if you understand the whole um, meaning you see that you are a distinct person you are a different entity different you are the knower you are the feeler you are the thinker so he gives a big lecture for 3 three, uh, three hours then he says don't go together just one person can go because now after 3 hours the dust has settled once the dust has settled in the lake you can see because it's still uh, like 1 o'clock or something you can see the through the using the, the sunlight is powerful enough to tell you where exactly the crown is then slowly one person dives in and pick, picks up the the, um, the crown they, they just the the moral of the story is you have to calm down and clean up your mind then you can see the self better so dhyana nirmathanat by meditating you will see the self better and what the self is made of it is a spiritual entity which is not matter which is something totally and is capable of knowing so it is dharma bhuta jnana is separate that is using dharma bhuta jnana which is outgoing it can, you can see objects around you and oh this is a pen this is a paper you understand the external objects because this the self is made of the jnana that is known as self is jnana swarupa and self is jnana gunaka that means self has the the characteristics of self is also jnana which which is outgoing in the sense that it can go and touch any object and under, and you will understand it so even if when you are saying you know that you when i say you that is the jivatma swarupa knowing an object the knowing is dharma buddhi jnana using dharma buddhi jnana you know this particular object any particular object see the problem is the, this needs a lot of thinking yeah 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 this not the mana jnana and mana avabodhane is probably mana ఉట్ we are not related to anything else but we are gnana swarupa we are the, um, we are made of gnana we are and that is a piece of god in this, because bhagavan is is a gnana swarupa and he is the material material cause of all these jivas that means we came from that that pirmal how like ita sudipta pavakat vishpulinga prabhavante swarupa like how we, from a huge fire ball of fire the sparks come out like that from the ball of the fire which is known as para brahman all these jivas came out of it like sparks so we are the spark of that big fire it's hard it be it, now we can only talk about analogies drishtanta darshtantika means what do you mean by that particular what is that object i 
that is the whole purpose of this whole Bhagavad Gita uh, chapter saying that you need to realize that self, the vision of the self. And that's why we came, we explained that Tada Yoga Mavapshasi in the second chapter, right? When, um, when uh, you, uh, when your mind is calm and, and um, uh, in a, when, when your mind is not uh, moving around, you know, near, uh, always about an object, if, if you withdraw your mind away from all objects, then Tada Yoga Mavapshasi, you will achieve self-realization, you see yourself. That is the first time a vision of the self comes to that. So you know yourself by your own jnana. That means your, your out, outbound jnana is directed inside, inward to see yourself, and you will get a vision of yourself. Why don't we do one thing? Because um, uh, um, RTG may not have listened to second chapter yet, as far as I know. Last time we talked. Yes, I did not. Yeah, yeah, I haven't. <laughs> So I will... let her, let her uh, go through the second chapter lectures and think about it for a long time and you will know. Okay, sure. sure. Thank you. That's why in the 13th chapter it says Dhyane, Dhyane, Atmani, Pashyanti, Kejid, Atmana, Atmana, Anye, Sankhe, Na, Yoge, Na, Karma, Yoge, Na, Chapare. You can see the self using Dhyana Yoga, Karma Yoga, or Sankhe Yoga. All these three yogas will help you realize and, and feel, experience this Atman. So Yoga Shastra is a Pariksha Shastra. That means you can verify the results. So the person who meditates can find out who the person, uh, you know, all this realization occurs to that person. It is directly realizable here. That's what Lord Krishna says. So one more thing is here, the uh, very fundamental thing, we, 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 I don't know whether we covered this, says, when you see the similarity of Brahman and similarity of all these sentient entities in Brahman, in, in yourself, that person will never be deluded and that person will never be sad. He will be always happy, that means Ananda. He, he, he experiences bliss all the time. So, uh, this is a fundamental purpose of Shastra. What is the purpose of Shastra? It's shoka and moha, apanayana. Sadness and delusion should be removed. What can help you? Shastra can, can, can help you. That is a process of meditation. If you follow the Shastras, that will help you. These are all just um, clarifications of the same things we are talking about, so we don't have to really go in depth in it. J uh, the, an, an example of this, um, uh, an, an exp just uh, another way of saying about this, what is the, what is, uh, what is the form of Jivatma? Anantaro, Abhakyaha, Krishnaha, Rasaganaha Eva, Vijnanaganaha Eva, just like how uh, you take a uh, small piece of salt. The salt is, uh, the, the piece is salty outside, salty inside, salt everywhere, right? So this uh, jnana, this jivatma is pure knowledge. Knowledge means not about an object, but it is made of spirit everywhere, outside, inside, everything. Similarly, paramatma is made of that spirit outside, inside. The only difference is in Sri Vaishnava, uh, this one, even though a muktatma, a pure atma released from matter, completely uh, not bound by matter, 
a muktatma will have different characteristics known as the ashtagunas or the eight characteristics that include apahata papma, that means sinlessness, no papa, vijaraha. There is no old age for the person, old age, there is no old age. Vimrityahu, there is no death to atma. Vishwakaha, there is no sadness. Vijikitsaha, there is no hunger, thirst. Uh, uh, Vijigitsa apipasaha means thirst. Vijigitsa means no hunger. Satya kamaha means whatever the person thinks will happen. Whatever desires, all the desires are true. Satya kamaha. Satya sankalpaha. All plans, oh, you want to do this, you want to become this, it will occur because uh, it will, all things will become true, whatever the person thinks and plans. All these gunas or characteristics we are actually common to muktatma, that means release so release jivatma, as well as paramatma. So they are similar in these eight uh, uh, characteristics. The difference between Ishvara or paramatma and the so jivatma is sarva jagat karanatva. That is uh, the Lord paramatma is the cause of the universe. Sarva Antaryamitva, he is the Antaryami, he is the inner soul or the Antaryami of everything. Antaf Pravishta Shasta Janana Amit says, that means he has entered into everything and he controls everybody, controls everything. Sakshmi Patitva, he is the consort of Mahalakshmi. Moksha Pradatva, he can give moksha and Jivatma cannot give moksha to anybody. Obviously cannot give, give moksha to himself or herself. Sarva karma aradhyatva, all activities basically are worship of the Lord. But the sarva karma aradhyatva is the uh, actions do not worship the jivatma. Actions, all actions are of the form of worship of paramatma. Sarva sheshitva means everything exists to serve that Lord. The, this very ex, the, the very reason why or the very purpose of, of the universe the very purpose of all our lives is to only serve God. You can think and say, oh my God, how can this be? But that is the truth. We think that we have to serve our um, you know, uh, company owners, our CEO, our, our bosses, and our relatives and that and this. We have created all these things due to our karma. We are stuck here. But the real purpose of life is to serve that par Parabrahman continuously. What time is it now? Number four. It's going to be a little bit difficult to go through Abhijay Dasi Papakritamaha. We can do this in the next class. It's it's on the hour now. Any questions? Do you, if you have any live questions, you can ask. Uh, a quick question from me again, Arti. Okay. Um, so Paramatma, when we say it is, uh, he's there inside everything. So is it also inside the Jivatma, like as a giving source for Jivatma as well, or Jivatma is like separate? See, okay. The, the, um, see, the thing is, this inside-outside problem is a is a, a Tengalai Vatagalai problem, right? We have talked about it earlier, maybe. I'm just going oh, to repeat. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to repeat it okay. again. Not, not an issue. Okay. See, whether the Paramatma inside... Uh, uh, goes inside and lives inside this Atman um, uh, Jivatma, or he, whether he is uh, um, outside, like um, you know, like uh, um, uh, you know, uh, see, uh, like how uh, you do bonda, uh, you know, <laughs> you put something and put some uh, floor over it and then you cover it up, right? So is Paramatma covering the whole thing, or Paramatma is inside this Jivatma? These are all very. Uh, vague questions without knowing what exactly the spirit is. The reason is, spirit does not have a size. Jivatma, everybody says is Anu. Anu means very small. It is, it is not really small because the small means it is a physical dimension or oh, nanometer, one nanometer or half a nanometer or one third nanometer or something like that. This physical length and size cannot be attributed to Jivatma. It's a spiritual entity which does not have size, but it has a location because we can say, okay, my Jivatma is inside my body or it's controlling my body. We can have a rough location, 
but it's not it does not have any physical attributes so if it does not have any physical physical attributes how can you say paramatma is inside uh, jivatma and all those things you cannot say either way or inside outside you cannot it's in fact both is true so the real thing to do is not worry about it in that sense thank you yeah. makes sense and 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 why is, is see if you attribute the size to jeev uh, jeevatma it is like saying that you know how big is your headache is your bed, ed, headache um, 400 meters wide and 233 centimeters thin something like that does it make any sense headache cannot be measured that way how is how much is your happiness is it 500 pound uh, happiness or 5 ton happiness can we say that we cannot so all the dimensions don't apply to certain certain entities there is there is a separate um, entity by itself it's not like a physical dimension physical world how we can uh, measure using dimension okay thank you okay just to, uh, just to finish up what we were we had talked earlier before we finish this we had a poll Uh, saying that look um, we were talking about evolution last time and we were talking about um, uh, pratyaksha and, and uh, anumana uh, pramanas whether if there is a conflict between pratyaksha and shastra what do you what is more um, value, uh, what is what is more powerful is shastra uh, more value, powerful than uh, pratyaksha we were talking about it 50% of the class said that oh that was useful and um some people more uh, some people said it's more uh, use uh, they were they were all useful but some of them felt um even though i had a little bit more positive comment than negative we still had about some people feeling that it left us with more questions than answers i want you to write down your question somewhere and let's see if we can answer them because the evolution and all people will definitely get confused between science evolution and philosophy and religion and all those things so we need to be, take care of them rather than um not digesting them and just keeping in your heart keeping in your uh, mind all the time that oh my god i have some problem here i cannot understand i cannot uh, answer it's not good to do that we eventually we have to solve them but many people may have maybe not even interested in this evolution and other things because you know like i came here for understanding what what god is and what what jeevatma is and stuff like that i don't want to even men, mess with these things and i i can understand many people have different uh, views about this so it's okay but uh, maybe in the next next class we'll try to find out um, subjects which are more interesting and uh, important to you folks but i'm sure several people um did enjoy the talk about uh, evolution and other things so sh shall we finish this class now any more questions krishna just a, a comment on uh, uh, bhagavan the uh, and the jivatma how they the kind of uh, enters or do not enter kind of questions that arthi had asked uh the shruti vakya says tadevana pravishat yeah so see the three enters so see, what problem, i mean right see, now yeah i i know see the thing is think about think about like how uh, you know just simple thing my nervous system is controlling my body okay as simple as that so we know that there's physically it's inside my nervous system is inside my body it's controlling the different parts of my body and things like that but this is not possible to say in shastra but we have to explain to somebody using language so shastras are also language right so if you if, if so how do you explain without a knowledge so originally if you take shastras are not uh, just uh, 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 you know textbooks shastras are not textbook shastras are the form of knowledge itself right that means if a gnana comes directly from within you you can perceive and experience the uh, the all pervading nature of brahman the all and and how you as a as a limited entity gets pervaded by that paramatma anena jeevena atmana anupravishya nama rupe vyakaravani is what uh, you are mentioning about uh, ant pravishya shastra jananam sarvatma all these things these are not understandable using physical analogs 
once if people experience it, they will understand how God is inside and he, he controls. You cannot use physical analogy. Otherwise, it will become a big uh, fight like this uh, antar, antar vyapti, bahir vyapti, um, uh, fight, which are both useless uh, sides of the coin, useless options. You're right. It's, it's a traditional view versus the realization. Correct. Once you realize, the uh, then this antarvyapti, bhairvyapti question doesn't arise because the person will ex experience what that Shruti Vakya mean. The Shruti Vakya cannot be understood just by using physical analogs. Okay. Okay. All right. Any more questions? Then, if not, we can stop here. Asmat Guru Bhyar Maham, Asmat Parama Guru Bhyar Maham, Asmat Sarva Guru Bhyar Maham, Shri Krishna Prabhupada Maham, Shri Lakshmi Hayavadana Prabhupada Maham, Shri Lakshmi Nrsimha Prabhupada Maham, Sarvam Shri Krishna Prabhupada Hope these classes are of some use to you. Yeah, Definitely, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Krishna. Thank you. Then you